We greet you all with the peace of the Lord. In reverence to the Word of God, let's stand. And we will be reading in the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. And after that, we're going to read Matthew chapter 4, verse 12. to 17. First Isaiah 9, 1 and 2. The advent and the power of Jesus, the Messiah. <laughs> The Word of God says as follows. Nevertheless, the demons shall not be such as war in her vexation. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan in Galilee of the mountain, the nations. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, on them has the light shined. Now reading in Matthew, chapter 4, verse 12. talking about Jesus in Galilee. Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, Capernaum, which is on the sea coast, in the borders of Zebulun and Naphtali. That he might, to fulfill what we just read in Isaiah, to fulfill the prophecy. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah. The prophet saying, The land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentile, the people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region of shadow of that light is sprung upon. Lord, visit us, bless us, talk to us through your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The church may be seated. The word talks about a prophecy, a word that was prophesied by Isaiah, that one day the Messiah will show up and he will manifest himself among his people. And the word says that a time went by like 600 years, approximate. So this prophecy was mentioned ab uh, about these places. So 600 years before, the prophet could see already the situation of the people they will be reached by this prophecy and how these people will be. So he says that the, the land and the people of the land, the place that they will be dwelling, will be a land of anguishing, a place of sadness, anxiousness, 
suffering. And he says that this land will be true in darkness. It will be covered by darkness and sadness and negritude. So the land will be evil, will be covered and despised. But in the beginning, this thing will happen, but the land will be punished and covered by darkness, and it will be a land of shame, pain and suffering. In the region in which this will happen, it talks about two sons of Jacob, one of them, that after later on, Jacob will be called Israel. So the, the two sons mentioned, one of them means residence or inhabitants. And Zebulon, sister of Leah, and the meaning is fight or battle. Because when he born, Rachel, which means ship, she said, with, with struggles between myself and God, I gave birth. So if we put these two names together, we can resume and say, like, place of inhabitants of struggle or trouble place of trouble so in the place that the the bad things happen from this place will come the Messiah the chosen one in the same place that the Bible mentioned that will be covered with darkness Many will be reached by the light. And there is an expression close to the sea. Because the people back then was walking towards the sea. And we know that prophetically the, the sea means the world and his, his evilness under a sentence of death, a judgment, and we know for, for a fact that when you walk in darkness, you don't know where you're going, chances for you to go in the wrong directions. And the Bible says that these people are like in a comfort zone, dwelling this very inhospitable land. They were like okay to sit on the darkness, close to the shadow of death. If there is a shadow, that means someone is close by. So bringing that to our prophetic meaning, Death was close. But the Lord later on says, but the people that was living that circumstances and they were okay to live under darkness like that, that they didn't see an exit from all the struggles and troubles. They live in in fellowship with the darkness. And this is what the Isaiah predicted in his prophecy. But it, right in this, in this difficult place, the light will shine upon them. 
Now Jesus in the old in the New Testament, he comes to fulfill this prophecy. And the word says that when he approach the Bible talks about John the Baptist, the voice that shout in the desert, the one that comes to prepare the way of the Lord, the one that pointed to Jesus and says, here is the, behold, the Lamb of God that takes the sin of the world. And the Bible says, brethren, that in those days, this prophet of God, born from a woman, there was no man like John because he came to prepare the, the path of the Lord. This pro prophet was in prison. The king threw him in jail because of the gospel, because of the, the scriptures. And that was part of the prophecy as well. What God has established is already set the king from that period, he, he thought putting John in the prison, he will interrupt the fulfillment of the prophecy. But when Jesus arrived, the prophet was set free and he was exactly to this area, close to Zebulon and Naphtali, the place of the darkness, the place of the struggles, and Rachel used the expression, I fought with God and I prevailed. Every time we pray with the, with the battles of God, we prevail. So the word says that Jesus went to that direction. Jesus could go anywhere. He could go where the temple was where the, the, the high priest, the Levites, the doctors of, of the law, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the important men from that era, the ones that are familiar with the scriptures, but no. He went to a place where there was only despised people because it was the gallery of the Gentiles. There was a like a, a bad reputation land. The the people from that area was despised, and the the society didn't see any value in them. Solomon once want to to offer those land to another king. He says no, thank you, thanks, but no thanks, and he returned back like a Greek gift. So just in that place, Jesus went. But he went to fulfill this prophecy. Jesus came to the world to fulfill the prophecies because there will be a moment that the whole, the whole earth will be in darkness. And when you see this passage, the Bible used the expression, they will sit it on a darkness. It's a, it's, a, it's a different time. 600 years went by. The people didn't believe in the scriptures, in the scriptures and the, the, the prophecies. They were tired to wait. And the people were in darkness. So nobody moved. They will sit it in darkness. They will like in the comfort zone of this bad situation. Accustomed to the darkness. And the Bible says, do not get accustomed to this world. Do not confirm with this world. And we are living days that the world is confirming with this. It's getting confirmed with this world. And the world is establishing rules and the people that don't have light is following. And Bible says the world is in darkness and under 
the devil's command. And in the back in the time of Isaiah, there is a prophecy that something different will happen. So these people that were seated on the darkness will see a great light. So what the Lord is saying is, by the last days, in the place of anguish and affliction, suffering, evil, desolated, habitation of struggles, where people will be okay to live in, in those circumstances, they will see a light. When you talk about light, when people want to mention that there is a hope, they say there's a light at the end of the tunnel. There is a bad situation. I don't see a light in the, the end of the tunnel. I don't see an exit. I don't see a solution. So the people back then were like that. I don't see an exit. I don't see a solution. When everything looked like disrupted, I'll, I'll kick the bucket. That's it. There's no way. There's no solution. So then the people, the word says that the people seated in darkness. But the, the word says they saw a great light. There was a, a song, a very old one. Jesus is the divine light that never stopped to shine. Never cease. John, the Baptist, uh, I mean, the other John, the evangelist, in the chapter first, he says, the light will shine among the darkness. The Bible says that John came to testify about the light. It was the prophet, the Baptist, John the Baptist came to testify. To the one that is in the world, they will see the light. So the prophet talks about the light, but he was not the light. All the prophets mentioned something about the light, but they were not the light. But Jesus came to show that He is the true light. And exactly what He was doing at that moment and back then. In the moment of darkness, where there's no light, because what is darkness? It's the absence of light. Absence of revelation, absence of prophecy, absence of word of God among the people. That's why the Bible says they were seated on darkness and shadow. So that's why Jesus came to bring light to that very difficult situation, to reveal the man that he had a project of salvation from eternity. He is the solution and the hope. Remember about the light at the end of the tunnel? Jesus is not the light. Jesus is the light that brights the whole tunnel, the whole life. The light that came to dissipate the, the darkness in our life. He came to establish the kingdom of brightness, to reveal the man that there is a solution, there is a hope for my life, for your life. Because the people that were seated in the darkness, there was no hope but Christ in us is a hope of glory. It's a hope for eternity. So now we see the expression. And the people saw a great life. In this moment that we are living, actually, it's a moment of darkness. It's a time of darkness. The mankind is having an opportunity to see light. The whole humanity is having the opportunity to see the light. Because this light is not for a certain people, but for everybody. So Jesus came for everyone. God has loved the world so much that sent His Son Jesus. So everyone, no one can perish, but have the eternal life. The 
whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So the people that were like walking in the darkness, that's because they didn't have Jesus. But the ones that follow Jesus, they walk in light and not will experience darkness. So if you're following Jesus, you have the light because it's the, 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 the will of God. And the ones that will sit in the shadow of darkness, the light had shined. Interesting that the light came to everyone indistinguished. But upon some people, the light does not shine. The people that walk in darkness saw a great light. One thing is to see light and another thing is to be under the light. The, the Word of God talks about people that is called and others that, is, that are chosen. When we take the Acts of Apostles, it talks about the conversion of Paul. And close to midnight, Paul was going to Damascus. Suddenly, what happened? A light shone upon him. Brighter than the midday. Saul was running towards the death, away from God's project. But one day he was reached by the light. So the light shone upon Paul, and what happened to him? From that point on, his life started to be different. Because the ones that are in Christ is reached by grace, by revelation of Christ, he is a new creature. So the Word of God says, the one that inhabited in the darkness, the one that has no more hope, no opportunities upon them, the light has sh shone. Jesus did not come for the, the ones that are healthy, but for the ones that are sick. And he didn't come for the righteous, but for the unrighteous. Upon the valley of darkness, the light has shone. And the desire of the Lord is not only to see the light, because, like I said, they they all saw the light. When Jesus says, I am the light of the world, everyone saw that and noticed and, and witnessed that. But the ones that were saved by Jesus was the one that had a, an experience that let the light be part of their life. When you read the Word of God and you see that upon Peter, Andrew, James, Nathaniel, all of them, because they understood the call from the Lord. Like today, there is a call for our lives from God. The light is the revelation. And the Lord says that there was a man that the light is being shined upon him. And the, the gift of the Holy Spirit says that he has the bow and arrow and he was looking at the the target and it's a, a, the target is like something that a goal that you have to to go after like Paul mentioned in one of his letters I keep going to the target until I find the final reward, which is salvation in Jesus. So in the vision, this man has the bow and arrow, but there was something distracting him to make the bullseye. And in the gift, the Lord shows that what was, uh, what was distracting him was a bug, like a fly. So when we discern this gift, we say something very little, apparently significant, but cause distraction. Sometimes little things in our lives 
that cause trouble for us to reach God's projects in our life. And make us to go away from the plan and the, what God has for our lives. So this situation make him to to miss the bullseye. And tonight the Lord says there was an instruction to him to not pay attention to the fly. So he reached the, the target. He made the bullseye. So when he forgot, when he stopped looking at the, the, the fly or the distractions, he, he saw clearly his goals and he reached out the goals. So he, he moved from this one situation that he was living and he changed his switch, he switched to a better circumstances. The Lord is showing because the Lord has plans for his eternal life. The Lord also has shown a man coming from a long journey and he had a map. It's a treasure map in his hands. But even though having this map, he couldn't find He, he never found the treasure and he's frustrated. Why? Because of the absence of light. It's the absence of salvation. The letter kills, but the spirit brings life. So when we look at the map of the treasure, only in the historic way, we couldn't find God's revelation. But tonight the Lord showed his project and he found the, 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 the real treasure. And this real treasure that he was looking for, you know what it was? Peace. Back then, when we read in Isaiah, they lived in very difficult moments. But Jesus says, I give you my peace, my peace I give to you. Jesus went to that difficult place and as a light, he, he showed his glory upon them. And then he started to spread the gospel. And his message for that moment, for the people that lived there, that was under the shadow of death, the inhabitant the, the region of trouble, when he, as a light, he, he shone upon them, he start his first ser sermon, his first message. And the first message of Jesus for those that were there, for the Gentiles, for us, is there is hope. Repent yourselves. Jesus could use many expressions. He could say many, many things. Love God upon, above everything. Love your, your neighbor. And you have to do that. Pray. Fast. Before the moment that we read, he had fast and prayed for 40 days and 40 nights and he prayed in the early dawn too but he came to this people that was living in darkness and when he arrived him as a light he he shone upon them and he brightened the whole thing and he showed his project and he announced that it was needed for them they need to repent. When someone is full of the Holy Spirit, like Peter, the first message after the Pentecost is he uses the same expression, repent yourselves. And why Jesus said that to them? And why we need to repent? And from what? We can make a list of stuff that we need to repent. 
It will be complicated, right? We're going to be embarrassed. But why to repent? Why in the moment of darkness, Jesus are removing them from the darkness, the light is shining upon us, why to repent? He will explain. Because the moment has arrived. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has arrived. We are living the moment of prophetically, midnight. Darkness fall upon the world. And at the midnight there was a shout. Here's the the bridegroom. Come and meet him. What is necessary at this moment of the night? Light. Identity. Jesus came to provide the identification to these people. Everybody was in darkness. In the darkness you couldn't see anything. You, can ru you cannot recognize anybody. Five brides could enter and five could not because they in the dark darkness. They couldn't be identified by the bridegroom. To you, to me and everyone. So he arrives to the ones that were in darkness and tell them, you are the light of the world. So the light that was in him was transmitted to the ones that was seated in the darkness and the shadow of death. So he came and he brought solution, the value of death. So he came to make us someone, make us whole. Now we have an identification of God's project for our lives. Repent yourselves. So it's time to repent. It's time to seek for forgiveness from the Lord. To plead for the power which is in the blood of God that can forgive our sins. It's time to have our, our lamps lit because the kingdom of God has arrived. Any moment back then, they didn't expect. Nobody expected back then that Jesus would manifest as the Messiah. More than 400 years without talking to the people, nobody expected that. So the second come of Jesus will be the same way. Nobody will know when. And the darkness are announcing that. The signs are fulfilling. And any time this light will shine totally, Jesus will come. Maranatha, Jesus is a hand. We need to be prepared. We need to be sanctified, purified, ready. And repent is the key. Repent is the conscience of the, the evil and the bad stuff. Whatever doesn't please God in our, in our lives. When we feel embarrassed. I have to repent and to leave the circumstances. Why? Because the kingdom of God has arrived. So Jesus manifests himself to give these two words. Repent yourselves because the kingdom of God has arrived. There was people in darkness. And he says, now you have a choice. You have an opportunity. Because before you were condemned in the region of value of death, we all under a judgment and condemnation. And he came to announce that there was a moment of rep, uh, repent because the kingdom of God has come. Let's sing a song.
colocar de pé. Te adoramos, Pai, bendizemos, gratos somos, porque, Senhor Deus, um dia esta luz resplandeceu sobre as nossas vidas. Senhor Deus, nos tirou das trevas. Shine upon our lives. You have removed us from darkness. We bless you. We glorify you. Before we were like walking towards the death, but one day you have introduced your son Jesus so we can have eternal life. We glorify your holy name. Lord, we adore you as we have repent from our acts of sins. We are embarrassed for what we have done before we know you. We are so regret that we did not attend to your call before. But blessed be your name that you have called us, you have mercy upon us, and you have removed us from darkness, and you have conducted us to your presence. And we bless you for your great love, your great mercy is the cause that we are here tonight. Blessed be your holy name, your Holy Spirit tonight, and today and every day, helping us in the journey of the eternity. We bless you, for your kingdom has come. Blessed be your holy name, for your people, for the church, for the blessings, and all the benefits that you have provided to us. For all the lives that tonight have been enriched by your light, by your salvation, by the revelation that, re that bright upon them, confirming their names in the book of life, that we called, we chosen, So, Lord, seal their salvation and keep them in the way of salvation and eternity. Give us a blessing, weak, and deliver us from evil. Prevent us from falling in temptations. We supplicate your blessing and we ask you that you can receive our service, our adoration that we offer you in the holy name of our Savior Jesus Christ. And in your name we say, may the grace, the wonderful grace of our Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit, and the great love of God can be upon your people and your church now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. The, the service has come to the end. We are here to help you, to assist and pray with you. The ones that are watching through Zoom also will have assistance from the workers and deacons. So whatever is your need, stay with us and we will be assisting you. We announce the church, whoever has the two doses of vaccines or uh, the, the one shot, can participate in any service. You don't need to wait for your group. So soon will be announced one more service. In the right opportunity, Pastor will make it official. Amen. I say to all, peace of the Lord.